Well, in terms of time miracles and that type of thing, it, it's on a need to do basis. So yeah. if I need to do something and I feel it's in alignment with the father's heart, then then I basically choose that reality. So I choose uh -huh. the reality that aligns to the father's heart, which also is is um, something out of that which I know how to do in the sense I know how because I've done it before. So I have testimony. Uh -huh. Some of those testimonies were things that happened to me. Some of those testimonies, there were things that I chose to do. Uh, and then I choose to do it again. Um, mm -hmm. And to be honest, it, it's not it's not as common as it once was because I don't think I've got the the need to do it as much in a, in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sort of managing um, working and cooperating with time. Um, in it's not working against me it's always for me so i don't operate from a mindset of well i'm too busy i don't have enough time i right. always consider that i have enough time and if if that is the choice and intention that i have then i always have enough time now whether that is a uh, an outworking of a time miracle in the there's an expansion or contraction of time uh, to enable me to do whatever I need to be doing. I don't consider it any other way. So sometimes it's relative to the way you're considering it. So I don't know how long it would take me to do something because I don't look at it from the point, oh, well, I've got an hour or there's two hours or I've got this. I just outwork what I need to do and I do it. Now that might entail time expanding contracting around what i'm doing so it's not that i do something from a position of oh i don't have enough time i must do this i must do that it's always coming from a, a state of rest and being so i operate from a state of rest therefore i am able to do everything i need to do it's not even a concept in my mind that I don't have any enough time to do something. I will always have enough time to do something. And if that entails time bending around that, then it will around my choice and my choosing that reality. If you're coming from a perspective of, well, I don't have enough time and I've got a limit to this time. I've only got an hour. I've only got this then you may have to consciously choose to expand or contract time because your mindset is i don't have enough whereas i always have enough therefore it manifests around me more than me saying okay i'm going to expand this time right now from an hour to a day i don't need to because i always have enough time therefore time will respond and cooperate with me in that way now, if you're looking at time miracles in that you can go back in time and do something, then I only do that as I, I'm led to do it. It's not something I can, I can choose to do it, but I'm always surrendered to the Father's purpose in it. So if I did an activation, um, which I, I, mean, I think I did an activation with a group last month, in which was, okay, let's be open to being available for God to use us back in time. So we go into the now of the eternal now, and then we can come out of that into any place in time. And it was as if we'd always been in that time. You know, I didn't change history. I was used in history, but I go into the eternal now in 2024 and I go back to I don't know, 1925 or 1850 or whatever it might be, I do something, I've always done it, but I'm only aware that I've done it now because I've gone into it relatively to my now position. And I come out from the eternal now position into that time, come back into this time having done something. I probably am less aware of doing that than I would have been in the past. You're, you've always okay. been used in history. 
I see. Okay. Because if you think of the eternal now as it's all now, I can go into the eternal now in 2024. I'm part of that continuum. I and see. I can then go into, let's say, 1850, do something, come back into the eternal now and come back into 2024. And I've always been used in that moment. Mm. I didn't go back and change that moment. From the eternal now perspective, that moment hadn't happened yet until I went into it. It's a different concept from linearity. You can't think linearly um, to be able to effectively do that. Now, when I first did it, I was just taken into it and I found myself in the past and I did something in the past then I found myself back in the present. I didn't know the mechanics. I just was in a position of engaging with God. I found myself somewhere else. I then went, came back and it was obviously in the past because the people were dressed uh, and spoke in a, in a way from, you know, a couple hundred years ago, whatever it might be. I also found myself in space, in other places in this time and mm -hmm. other places in the, in the world. And um, now I don't think I traveled spirit, soul, body. Because I think in occasions I did something, I asked people, well, was I still there? Did I disappear? And they said, no, but I, it looked like you weren't there consciously. So then my spirit soul was transported in, in another space, let's say in China, Russia, anywhere. Um, uh, and... I did something, but I manifested physically in that space. People were able to see me, engage with me, and I was able to touch them. So my spiritual being was able to manifest into a physical reality, which is exactly what an angel does. Right. Angel is a spiritual being, but can manifest in this physical realm in a physical way and can be touched and can touch us. So that that has happened, um, you know, and I was quite often aware of that happening, but I am always available for that sort of thing to happen, whether I'm conscious of it or not, because I don't have to be conscious to do something because my spirit is conscious. I can mm -hmm. do something in my spirit being without necessarily my soul being aware. Yeah. Because I dwell in that spiritual realm all the time. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.